Yes, uh, welcome to ECR Tours. Once again, we come to you with more information on international human rights. Um, on the 12th of January 2024, uh, South Africa raised an allegation of genocide or intent uh, of genocide by Israel against uh, the Palestinian people. And so this was raised with the ICJ, which is the International Court of Justice. And so the video today, the question that is being asked is what constitute genocide under international law? Now the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide uh, this was one of the first international laws um, that was basically signed on the 9th of December 1948 and came into force on the 12th of January 1951 under the UN General Assembly Resolution 260A-3. Now, why was this one of the very first, this international law against uh, genocide, one of the very first? The reason was to do with the Second World War and also the Holocaust and all the atrocities that were committed by Nazi Germany. And the idea was basically to ensure that such a thing uh, never happened um, again. Now, what you also notice is that this um, Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, it is an international law, obviously, that has been um, ratified by 150 nation, 153 nations. Uh, however, it's also a customary international law. Uh, what that means is that whether you have whether a nation is ratify this uh, convention or not, they are um, legally bound by this convention, and so it is basically a global convention because it is an international um, international customary law, and so obviously. The issue of genocide, one of the key things to look for is basically a sort of a pronouncement or declaration by leaders of a nation with an intent to uh, cause damage, uh, cause destruction. Uh, this can be in the form of bombardment or starvation or any other means to eliminate a group of people based on their religion, their nationality, their uh, ideology, or for whatever the reason that you basically make this declaration to eliminate such people. And so this was very evident in Nazi Germany when Adolf Hitler and his uh, military generals and henchmen uh, made that declaration uh, to attack and destroy Jewish people uh, within Germany and in the whole of Europe. And so this is why it was necessary for this Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the crimes of genocide was put in place under the UN General Assembly Resolution 260A-3. And so what I'm just going to do is basically just go through this, um, uh, read through this convention so that obviously the audience will then decide if they think that there was a problem of genocide in the Middle East. Um, now, 
this is obviously raised by South Africa. Uh, they have come under an extensive oppre oppression, obviously, over the years when the black ma majority uh, was under apartheid rule in South Africa. And so South Africa could, can basically identify with the problems um, in the Middle East. But not only that, um, I suppose if you then go back to Nazi Germany, then I suppose most Jewish people may also uh, want to identify with the problem that is happening in the Middle East. So without further ado, I'm just going to uh, read through this article um, and also the preamble so that uh, the audience can make up their mind what they think and obviously uh, what may happen in the um, International Court of Justice, which is ICJ. So this is it. Um, I will begin. So the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide approved and proposed for signature and ratification or accession by the General Assembly Resolution 260A-3 of 9th December 1948, entry into force 12 January 1951, in accordance with Article um, 13. So it says, the contracting parties Having considered the declaration made by the General Assembly of the United Nations in its resolution 96 1, dated 11 December 1946, that genocide is a crime under international law, contrary to the spirit and aims of the United Nations and condemned by the civilized world. So it says that genocide is condemned by the civilized world. Um, there is also the, um, I think, the issue with Russia, Ukraine. Um, I suppose when that came, um, that attack or aggression from Russia commenced, uh, possibly about a year and a half ago, um, the European Council, Council of Europe, if I should say, uh, they were very quick to meet and exclude um, the membership of Russia. So Russia was basically struck off as a, as a Council of Europe member. Uh, we also know that Israel is actually an observer state uh, on the Council of Europe. And so I suppose, um, you know, people are also on the lookout to see what the Council of Europe is going to do in relations to all the problems that are currently uh, occurring within the Middle East. Um, one of the key problems with human rights has been the fact that um, uh, situations can be very selective in, in, in the way sometimes the United Nations um, respond or react or even as the Council of Europe uh, in the way that they rally behind the situation depending on the vested interest and so it is it seems to be a very selective uh, way of doing things and this is not a very it, it, it does not help the situation and it is a, a concern because there has to be consistency in the way that they do things. So I'll carry on. Recognizing that all periods of history, genocide has inflicted great losses on humanity and being convinced that in order to liberate mankind from such an odious scourge, international cooperation is required. Hereby, 
agree as therein after provided. Article 1. The contracting parties confirm that genocide, whether committed in times of peace or in times of war, is a crime under international law, which they undertake to prevent and to punish. And so, as you can see, under no circumstances is genocide allowed. So, be it a time of peace or a time of war, genocide is prohibited under the Convention of the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. Article 2 says, in the present convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethical, racial, or religious group as such is ethnical. Yeah. And so these are the um, uh, 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 criteria uh, basically setting out what genocide is. So A is killing members of the group. B, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. C. Deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. D. Imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. And then E. Forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. And so I will take article 2 again. So Article 2 is where they set out what genocide is. So in the present con convention, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group as such. A. Killing members of the group. B. Causing serious bodily or mental harm to any member of the group. C. Deliberately inflicted on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. D. Imposing measures intended to prevent birth within the group. E. Forcibly um, transferring children of the group to another group. And so this article 2 really sets out the full details of what genocide is and so the audience or the viewers can make up their mind if they think that the issue with Israel Palestine there is genocide article 3 the following acts shall be punishable a genocide b conspiracy to com commit genocide c direct and public incitement to commit genocide and so this is where they set out um, a punitive um, basically the, the punishment that is due and it has set it out in article 3a to c where genocide in itself is punishable by the law conspiracy to commit genocide is punishable and the direct public incitement of gen genocide is also punishable. D. Attempts to commit genocide. E. Complexity in genocide. So, Article 4. Persons committing genocide or any of the other acts enumerated in Article 3 shall be punished, whether they are constitutionally responsible leaders, public officials, or private individuals. And so Article 4 sets it out. So, for example, in the case of the Holocaust, uh, obviously Hitler and his leaders that basically led Germany to this barbaric act of Holocaust would have all come under punishment under Article 3 of this convention. 
but I suppose these were all written after um, the Second World War and after the Holocaust. So Article 5 says, contracting parties undertake to act in accordance with their respective constitutions, the necessary legislation to give effect to the provision of the prevention at, of the present convention, and in particular, to provide effective penalties for persons guilty of genocide or any of the other acts enumerated in Article 3. And so it goes on to tell you that uh, punishment shall be given. Um, Article 6 says persons charged with genocide or any of the other acts enumerated in Article 3 shall be tried by a competent tribunal of the state in the territory of which the act was committed or by such international panel tribunal as may have jurisdiction with respect to those contracting parties which shall have accepted its jurisdiction. And so when this genocide is committed, these parties that commit them shall be tried in the law of that land or um, under an international tribunal. Um, obviously, when evidence uh, provided and so if it is if there is evidence to uh, basically back the fact that there has been this open declaration by leaders of a nation to basically eliminate another group of people and basically incite their people to um, uh, basically act or, or conduct this genocide then these people shall come under international law and be tried and be punished accordingly. Article 7. Genocide and other acts enumerated in Article 3 shall not be considered as political crimes for the purpose of extradition. The contracting parties pledge themselves in such cases to grant extradition in accordance with their laws and treaties in force. And so people may be uh, people that commit the acts of genocide may be extradited um, they may be uh, extradited back to a jurisdiction where they can be tried and punished um, article 8 any contracting party may call upon the competent organs of the united nations to take such action under charter of the united nations as they consider appropriate for the prevention of suppression of acts of genocide or any of the other acts enumerated in article 3 and so article 8 is what really uh, sets the tone for south africa to basically come to the icj which is the international court of justice to basically make such allegations or an application against israel because Article 8 actually allows that that uh, any of the member states or any country can actually uh, file to the ICJ, being the International Court of Justice, if they do find that an act of genocide is being committed. Article 9 says, dispute between the contracting parties relating to the interpretation, application or fulfillment of present convention including those related to responsibilities of the state for genocide or for any of the other acts enumerated in Article 3, shall be submitted to the International Court of Justice at the request of any of the parties to the dispute. So there you go. Article 10. The present convention of which the Chinese, English, French, Russia and Spanish texts are equally authentic shall bear the date of 9th December 1948. And so this sets the various languages in which this um, uh, article, uh, uh, basically this convention is recognized. Article 11 says the present convention shall be open upon until 31st December 1949 for signatures 
on behalf of any member of the United Nations and of any non-member state to which an invitation to sign has been addressed by the General Assembly. So this uh, basically now we are out of um, what the details of a genocide is. It goes on now to set the parameters within the convention of what is what and um, obviously the contents and its application. The present convention shall be ratified and the instruments of ratification shall be deposited with the Secretary General of the United Nations. After 1st January 1950, the present convention may be acceded to on behalf of any member of the United Nations and of any non-member state which has received an invitation as foresaid. The instrument of accession shall be deposited with the Secretary General of the United Nations. Article 12 says, any contracting party may at any time by notification address the Secretary General of the United Nations extend the application of the present convention to all or any of the territories to the conduct of those foreign relations that contracting party is responsible. Article um, 13 says, on the day when the first 20th instrument of ratification or accession has been deposited, the Secretary General shall draw up a process verbal and transmit a copy thereof to each member of the United Nations and to each of the non-states um, contemplated in Article 11. The present convention shall come into force on the 19th day following the date of the deposit of the 20th instrument of ratification or accession. Any ratification or accession affected or effected subsequently to the latter shall become effective on the 19th day following the deposit of instrument of ratification or accession. Article 14. The present convention shall remain in effect for a period of 10 years as from the date of its coming into force. It shall therefore remain in force for successive periods of five years for such contracting parties to have not denounced it at least six months before the expiration of the current period. Denunciation shall be effected by a written notification addressed to the Secretary General of the United Nations. Article 15 says, if as a result of denunciation, the number of parties to the present convention shall become less than 16, the convention shall cease to be in force as from the date on which the last of these denunciation shall become effective. And so I think this sets uh, basically the, um, um, it, it is something to do with the membership when obviously the convention on the prevention and punishment of the crime of genocide came into force obviously there was a a minimum uh, number of countries that were required to actually form this convention and that if the numbers dropped below 16 then the whole convention would have been deemed ineffective but as it stands at this moment um, 153 countries in the world are have ratified this convention but now it is also customary international law which means that even if you are not a member even if you are not a member of um, 
or, or, or have not ratified this convention, you are legally bound uh, by this convention. Okay, so Article 16 says, A request for the revision of the present convention may be made at any time by any contracting party by means of a notification in writing addressed to the Secretary General. The General Assembly shall decide upon the steps, if any, to be taken in respect of such request. Um, Article 17 says, The Secretary General of the United Nations shall notify all members of the United Nations and the non-member states contemplated in Article 11 of the following. A signature, ratification and accession received in accordance with Article 11. Notification received in accordance with Article 12. The date upon which the pre present convention comes into force in accordance with Article 13. Denunciation received in accordance with Article six, uh, 16. The abrogation of the convention in accordance with Article 15. Notification received in accordance with Article um, 16. So Article 18 says the original of the present convention shall be deposited in archives of the United Nations. A certified copy of the convention shall be transmitted to each member of the United Nations and to each of the non-member states contemplated in Article 11. And then finally, it's only 19 articles. This convention is made up of 19 articles. So Article 19 says the present convention shall be registered by the Secretary General of the United Nations on the date of its coming into force. And so this marks the end of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. Now, the core aspect of this um, Convention is basically between Article 1 and Article, it basically comes up to Article 9, or even if you say Article 10, is where they obviously breaks down all the languages, but the core content of what constitutes genocide, it sets out from the preamble of the Convention on the prevention and punishment of the crime of genocide, 9th of December, 1948. And that basically, the what constitute um, a genocide sets out from the preamble to Article 10 of this convention. And so now it's down to you, the viewer or audience, to make up your mind of what you are seeing in the Middle East, i.e. also what South Africa has also presented to the International Court of Justice as evidence of the intent um, by the leaders of Israel in their um, basically intention of causing havoc or destruction uh, to uh, the people in Palestine. And so it's uh, down to you, the audience, to decide or reflect if you think that there is an act of genocide going on in the Middle East. Uh, I'm sure that uh, in the world, wherever there has been any act of genocide, such acts have been actually condemned by the whole world because uh, uh, nobody is in uh, favor of the entire destruction of any group of people in the world. 
and so uh, this show mark the end of this video uh, we will continue in the in our normal course which is the uh, the articles in the ICCPR which is the International Covenant on uh, Civil and Political Rights that is the one that currently uh, I am actually going through at this uh, moment but in view of obviously this um, this issue in the Middle East and obviously with the South Africa's action uh, against Israel in the International Court of Justice, I did find it necessary to basically bring to you what genocide is under international law. So once again, thank you for watching EEC Artos. Uh, certainly add your comments and contributions. And this is purely on the question of genocide. It's basically bringing to you what the definition really is under international law. It is not our duty here to uh, the, the court, the International Court of Justice. It is their duty to decide if there is genocide or not. But here uh, we read to you the articles and what actually constitute genocide. And so be objective and constructive in your contributions and your comments. Thank you once again for watching EECR Tours. Like our videos, share it so that you know everyone knows what really constitute genocide. Thank you once again for watching and have a nice evening.